what she just said before about the small businesses is what I feel every single day. That's why I started back to work in the first place. We got some new listeners. I know the cops are listening too. I want everybody to hear these stats. When we started this year, we had 1.15 million small businesses, making up over 97% of all the businesses in this country, 70% of all the jobs in this country, the largest portion of our GDP, and virtually the entirety of our middle class. The virus was used as a way to shut down business. They use fear and ignorance. Fear with models that they weren't backed up by data and the ignorance of people who don't go any further than their TV or their government to tell them how to live and how to make their decisions. Fear and ignorance are the most dangerous things to freedom in society. And freedom is what's essential. We are all essential. When you just let the government decide who is essential and who is not essential, we all lose as a society. There are no winners and losers in that thing. Everybody loses. Because when those small businesses close, our economy is affected. We're all affected. We've already lost over 225,000 businesses. These businesses are supporting families. These families are falling apart. Our suicide rate is almost 500% higher than normal. Our addiction rate can't even be determined. It's so high. Domestic violence is off the charts. Children are scared. Everybody is losing their mind. And what does the government tell us? We're going to extend your lockdown. We're going to extend the border closure. And we're going to extend CRB another two months, bringing it to six months. Enough is enough. Why do we want to extend CRB? Because they know every week they play no people to that unemployed, dependent on government class. It's a push towards socialism, but more important, it's a push away from freedom and government control. If you do not have your own livelihood, if you rely on the government to feed your family, you are not independent, you are not making your own decisions, you are not free. You understand? Yes. Enough is enough. They are using fear. They are using things like wearing masks to dehumanize you, to make you comply, to make you afraid, to make you perpetuate this to others, to give the impression that it's scared. People aren't wearing masks because they're scared of the virus. People are wearing masks because they're scared of the government or they're scared of the person in the grocery store that's going to gang up on them and call them irresponsible or a killer. It's ridiculous! Absolutely ridiculous! They're in front of the end of the town. At Dundas Square yesterday, Matthew was in his cart and he had his, he had the pumps over Matt's shirt hanging off the side. And a little kid walked by with their mother. And the mother had forced the kid to wear a mask. And you could tell the child did not want to wear this mask. Complete child abuse. 100% child abuse state sanction. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But this child, instead of the hugs over Matt's shirt, and immediately just ripped off the mask. Yeah! Yeah. When you're not afraid, you cannot 
you heard, you heard, yeah. Are they protecting our businesses? No! Well, every week, plenty of people signing up to back to work with a sob story. I already lost my house. I'm a single mother of three kids. People are telling me I'm going to get arrested if I try to work. These are people at the end of their rope. These are people calling me out of sheer desperation. At the end, with nothing else to do. Not even expecting results. But guess what? We have a 100% success rate so far of helping businesses renegotiate their rent and reopen under certain circumstances and generate revenue. And we have a 0% rate of bylaw infraction. A perfect record. So it's working. And why are we doing this? We haven't even seen the consequences start to manifest yet. Our reality is, we're going to have at least a 10% reduction in our GDP this year. That's depression level reduction. We lost 20% of our small businesses, millions of jobs. When you combine that loss of GDP, that massive unemployment, the huge $400 billion deficit, by next year, those CRB payments people are collecting for two grand a month aren't even going to buy their groceries. But they're not going to let you hear that. They're not going to let you feel that. Because by the time fall rolls around and flu season kicks in, and most of the country is wearing masks, destroying their immune system, our flu season is going to be worse than normal. And guess what we're going to blame it on? The virus! Thank you! The COVID second wave. And guess what the first thing they're going to do is? Lock everybody down once again. Why? Because they want to destroy the rest of the businesses, and they want to hide the consequences for manifesting. If we're locked down, we won't notice that massive inflation. We won't notice that massive debt. We won't notice those massive job losses. And then they can keep it going. That is their plan. That's why we're doing back to work right now. Just like we built this army here, this fearless army of Ontarians. They're doing the same with businesses. By the time they're ready to lock us down again, we'll have 100, 200 businesses in my army. And when they lock us down and tell us we're going to be gone for two weeks, and it turns into six months, and everybody's at the end of the road. All it will take is one email from me to launch all these businesses into action. We'll restart the economy single-handed. And that's where our plan is. What else are we doing to fight this? As another speaker mentioned, we got Rocco Galati on the case, literally. Yeah! He was supposed to file a submission this week at 83 pages long. However, you just have to keep writing, because our government just keeps doing more and more illegal shit. <laughs> We're over a hundred pages now in our submission. This was going to cover the lockdown, the mandatory vaccines, our businesses, even 5G and social distancing. We have everything covered in this. We're going to hold them accountable. We're going to get results. What else are we doing? As we know, the best way to combat ignorance is with truth and awareness. The best way to do that is through the moms. Moms is the truth. You guys, you guys listen. And you're very influential. If we, if we, hear, if we can get through to you, you got you and your children, you get through to the husband, you get through to everyone. The government knows this too. That's why they invented a, uh, an NGO called Mothers Against Drunk Driving. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's very effective at what it does, at taking our rights and getting illegal checkpoints and all these other beautiful things the government couldn't do without it. So let's give them a round of applause for a brilliant idea. For them. For them. But it gave me an idea. An idea for a massive online awareness campaign targeting moms. Not just in Canada, but around the entire world. Yeah. We want to make sure that by the time September comes around, no mother in her right mind will even think of sending their child to that trauma center they are trying to call schools. We came up with our own mad Mothers Against Distancing. We're, we have a, I just created the Facebook group at like 5 in the morning last night. We already have hundreds of people joining. I don't even know how. It does. And the website's going live. Our slogan is going to be, Get Mad. Why? 
That's what we all need to do. Everybody's so compliant. Everybody's staying home. Everybody's doing what they're told. No! Stop doing what you're told! Get mad! Stand up! Fight back! Enough is enough! We are now aware. We will make others aware. Awareness ends this. When people realize the virus is not dangerous, when people realize businesses are the target of this and we save them, when people realize that putting your kids in that school is going to cause exponentially more harm than good on a massive scale, they will stand up and they will say no. Right now, everybody's afraid. We know you fight ignorance with truth. How do you fight fear? With courage. Yeah. But it's a little more complicated. Because with truth, all I gotta do is tell you. Once you heard the truth, you can discern for yourself what's true and what's not. And now you know the truth, so you can act upon it. With fear, it's a little different. Fear is in your mind. It's something you need to overcome. I can't just tell you something and all of a sudden you're not afraid. But I can give you the information. I can give you the means to fight back. Like I did with the back to work. Think about with back to work. The people are sitting there compliant because they're scared, they're confused, they don't know their legal rights, and they don't have the money to fight back. So what did I do? I created an anonymous network that links people together, safety in numbers, just like we have here, without compromising their identity. That appealed to everybody. What's next? I meet them, I show them their legal options to renegotiate their lease, and make a business model that will allow them to generate revenue within the guidelines, which they never thought was possible because they're too scared to try. That's the courage that's provided by the plan. The next thing we do, we have a legal team in place for them, ready to go, 24 hours a day. So if they have any trouble, they have their safety and peace of mind already taken care of. And obviously, last but not least, we got the legal fund, which has around $7,000 in it already after just two weeks. Just two weeks, everybody. So now that you provided them with those means, you provided them with a network of other like-minded people. You provided them the knowledge they require. You provided them the legal team they need to fight if required. And the funds. That's how you fight the fear. That's how you provide the courage. And that's what we need to do on a grand scale with everything, via awareness. It's one thing to make the businesses open and go against the government. That takes some courage, real courage. You're going against an edict of the government. You're breaking a so-called emergency order. There's real consequences. But what we tell hundreds of millions of mothers, and we have doctors on video telling these hundreds of millions of mothers that putting your child in one of those schools is the worst thing you could possibly do for them. There's no fear for them not to bring their kid to school. The only fear will be with other mothers that might say, why aren't you bringing your kid to school? But if they all feel the same way, and nobody wants to bring their kids to school, all this new normal bullshit ends instantaneously. When we stop the social distancing in the school, they have no reason to try to keep it anywhere else. No justification, no reason, and it will just evaporate. When social distancing evaporates, the fear that goes along with it evaporates. Without the fear, Without people being scared, they can think. And when you can think, you can make rational decisions. Like, taking off the mask. Yeah. Yeah. The big problem we have right now is that people are now compliant. The government did a great job of convincing everybody this is all over. We're opening, everything's opening, everything's going back to normal. No, they're not opening. They're opening everything but Toronto, which is like 50% of the freaking businesses. And they're only opening you at 50% capacity. How long can a country thrive at 50% of their economic output after losing 20% of their businesses and being completely shut down for two of the 12 months? Answer, it cannot. They know this. So we have to stop them from being able to do their goal. What do they have planned for you? This is the life they intend for you. Have you heard of the new Canada Day party that they're planning? Oh my goodness. Does anybody know what it's called? <laughs> Together Apart. Oh guys, don't hate. Don't hate. It's a very safe, inclusive, virtual celebration. This is how they want you to spend your Canada Day. Sitting at home. Yourself in front of a TV watching so called 
live bands perform on TV. This is my favorite part of the virtual Canada Day celebration. They're going to edit it with a fireworks display that you watch on TV. But guess what, guys? For your safety, it's not a real fireworks display. It's just a montage of fast fireworks display. This is how they want you to spend your Canada Day. Not with your friends, not with your family, not out of the sun, not having a good time, not walking around spreading a message. No, they want you in front of your TV, eating drive-thru while you're wearing a mask, lonely, and having virtual celebrations. They want that to be your new normal. What, I, what am I saying? I'm saying we gotta get back to work and back to normal.